Okay, programming 12, we're back. I think actually the first thing we'll do is we're going to take what we've been working on. We made this lovely little cube guy here. Love it. Looks good. I'm going to turn that into a bit of a function that will help us to um, separate what we want to do with uh, this 3D scene. Uh, if I just want to have a cube rotating around, like, no problem. That's great. But I'd also like to do a bit more. I'd like to, <laughs> like to have other shapes or something involved, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all basically all this stuff. and then, Well, not the background, really. And I'm going to take the, the rest of it. And I'd like to stick that into a separate function. Make it my own sort of cube function or something like that. I don't know what. Um, that will allow me to separate those transformations from another uh, shape's transformations. We could even put multiple boxes out there. Uh, but I also like to take a look at spheres as well. Spheres are pretty cool and might be interesting to take a look at those. Okay, so we'll start by making this new function. I'm going to stick it just right above void mouse dragged, but right below void draw. So it's in that space in between after the last brace. I'm going to make a um, void cube, I think would be a fine thing to call it. And I, ba I want to uh, basically have all this stuff in here, but I'll need to do a little bit more uh, to make this work. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cut and paste this into cube. But I don't want to just call it cube because, like, okay, that, that works. Like, this makes the same thing I had before. But if I wanted another... Oops, I deleted some stuff. If I wanted another cube, like, there's no way to, like, put that somewhere else or change its color or, um, you know, its position. Oh, I, I guess it kind of did, which is wild. Did not expect that. But actually, it does kind of make sense. You know what's happening? I love this. This is so great. I'm so happy we made these mistakes. I feel like it's like Bob Ross-esque. Oh, look, look, look out, folks. A oh, whack. <laughs> whack. Whack. Uh, I love these sort of like little happy mistakes we're making. It's just learning. Just learning. What's happening here is the uh, rotates and translates are stacking on top of each other. Because uh, we're not using push and pop matrix. So the rotates are happening and the translates are happening one on top of another. So we're rotating. And, and the, the one that's like in the distance is the my favorite one. Like it rotates around its own translate and it rotates around the outer cube too. How wild is that? That's pretty that's pretty hilarious. But actually I didn't I didn't mean to do that at all. Uh, <laughs> so I, w I do want to put in the push uh, matrix and pop matrix, which will basically prevent the translates from affecting other examples of cubes or other shapes. Um, so I'll put in push matrix and pop matrix. You can sort of think of that as like, uh, I spelled matrix wrong. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm just so excited about that cube thing that happened. It's so fun. Uh, but anyways, uh, the push and pop matrix will sort of uh, be like begin transformations, uh, do the, all the transformations, and then pop matrix is like, okay, now put it back the way it was when we pushed the matrix. Um, so that's a, that's a reset button almost. Like here, start some new things, but remember what it was like before, and then uh, put it all back again. Stop messing things up. Unfortunately, that makes it a lot less exciting now, I think. I think we just see the cube now. It's just technically there's two cubes there, but we're just drawing the same ones. If I go past them, I can't even, can't, can't get them to be visible separate. So I'd like to be able to say, oh, maybe I can tell it like to have an X and a Y and a Z coordinate and maybe a color and uh, what else can I say? A size, maybe? That'd be cool. So I'd like to be able to like put that information in. So I need to make that um, information that I can uh, specify here. And I'll have to give them types, because these are parameters. So I can send you know, this information. So I'll say float, oops, i try again, float x, float y, float z, color c, I guess, um, float size. So now I'm just going to replace all of the pertinent information. So I'm, I don't necessarily want to be always in the center. I want to go wherever I'm told to go. So I'll put X here, Y here, and Z here. I'll leave the rotations the same for now. I, we might want to change that later on. We could parameterify those rotations as well. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uh, we're going to go on to the color now. So I'll fill with color C. Maybe I should have a stroke color that's separate. I don't know. We'll just leave it for now. You can have a stroke weight parameter. I'll just leave it for now. And then this will be size. So size, size. I think actually I can just specify size 
as one parameter, I think it'll automatically make it a cube. So this is just going to be um, side length if it's a single variable. Uh, sorry, single argument. Okay, so that's good. So now my cube won't work though. If I run this, it'll be like, hey, I'm missing something. It's like I expect numbers. So this is where I could say, oh, <laughs> I can say things like, you know, maybe width divided by two, height divided by two, zero. Um, oh, red. Can I send it? FF0000. Zero, 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 zero. I wonder. Can I do that? Let's find out. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send that like that. And I should get the same. Oh, it did work. Nice. So I got this exact same thing, but now I can make a different cube. So for example, I could make a cube that's maybe at um, zero, 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 and it's a blue cube. So uh, red, green, blue, so zero, 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 FF. Uh, and maybe it's um, also 200, because I, I want the same. So now I'll see a cube, a blue cube over at the top corner, and it can move around. And it, they move sort of in unison in a way. Um, so they have the same kind of rotational information, but that's kind of nice there. Uh, you know, you can stick it all over the place. You can stick it wherever you want, and that would be fine. So that's an example of uh, the fact that now this cube function can just be used whenever I want a cube. I can stick a whole bunch of cubes out there um, and, and reuse that over and over again. So, wow, exciting. <laughs> so now let's stick in a sphere. So I'm going to just... Um, Go and make a sphere function now. Spheres are great. Actually, I'll just, I'll, I'll just stick a sphere in. Let's just say, let's just stick a sphere in without any regard for what's happening right now. We'll put, we'll make our own little sphere function later on. Um, I think it's just sphere right now though. And um, we just give it a radius like 200. I'm gonna say, sorry, no fill, because it looks really cool without the fill. Well, the fill, it looks cool too, but no fill. Oh, it looks super good. So uh, I'll put maybe the stroke weight uh, up as well. Let's make it like three. That might be a bit much. Um, maybe I should make this 300 just to make it really visible. OK, oh, I didn't. I forgot to rotate it. Oh, we'll just run it. And we'll see that, oh, it's up in the corner. It looks pretty detailed, right? So fancy. Ooh, spheres. Um, let's put in the, um, a translate, though. So basically, I'm just going to steal what we have here. <laughs> I'll just take this stuff, too. Uh, we'll stick it in there, but we'll, we'll put this in a function later on. Uh, so we'll translate and rotate and all that stuff, and we can't translate to X, Y, Z, of course, because those are parameters, so we'll go to height divided by 2 and 0. So this is what I got for my draw function now. It's basically what we had before, we made those functions, but now with sphere. Sphere. So let's run that and see what happens. Ooh, hee hee, it's a sphere. It's so cool. You might be like, wait, 300? It doesn't look like 300. This whole thing's 800. Yeah, <laughs> so that's one of the tricky things about 3D is dimensions change as you get closer and further away from the camera. So I can make a 300, you know, radius sphere, uh, but depending on where we are, it might look different. Anyways, we can rotate this and it looks super cool. Look at that. It looks like a kind of a hamster wheelie thing. I can rotate it and spin it and just have a good old time. This is where a Z axis spin might be worthwhile. Woo! Look at that. That's just that's just pretty. We can line those up and get some neat neat patterns going on. Oh, my brain's hurting with the uh, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'll stop nerding out about that. You might want to see what it looks like with a fill, uh, which you could just do on your own, I guess, because you're not, you know, you got you got some skills, <laughs> but I'll just do it anyway. You can see, uh, oh, look, look, it's still there. It's just you can't see through it anymore. All the all those lines are there. You just can't see through to the other side uh, anymore. And this could eventually be textured and, and things. Uh, oh, oh, actually, I guess... It's not very exciting. We could we can set the stroke to red as well. Um, Two fifty five zero zero, uh, and we can get basically just a ball. And you can you can't tell this. I mean, you can sort of see some shake, and you can't really tell this much from a ellipse though. Other than it's a little bit jaggedy, and there seems to be something that happens when we turn it. 
Uh, once you start adding in lighting effects, however, then that's when the, it'll sort of be affected by shadows and things like that. So you might actually be able to tell uh, that it's a sphere, even with um, you know the stroke being sort of the same color as the fill. I'm hesitant to do that li as a live video. Maybe we'll do that in class, because uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it's like directional light is the name of the function, but I haven't really prepared for that. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Anyways, as, a, as an activity, I would suggest, why don't you go and turn this into a, well, I guess you can't really call it sphere, because there's already a sphere function, but maybe you turn this, oh, pardon me, turn this into a, a function. Uh, maybe call it ball, ball, ball is a round, sphere thing. Uh, and um, give it parameters, kind of like we did for the cube. So go make a ball function, uh, and that will sort of help you with, especially with the next activity, where we're going to make textured um, shapes, 3D shapes because uh, you'll need to understand how those functions work. So go ahead, make that into a ball function. So I could just call ball and cube with two lines of code, and it'll make sort of these happen. Or I could put a whole bunch of different balls all over the different place. You don't have to worry about the stroke being sort of anything special. Uh, just fill is fine. So I should be able to put in, like, maybe a cube and a circle. Uh, sorry, a cube and a, and a sphere and a cube and a sphere and so on and put them all over the place and, and make them rotate around as I click and drag. So that's sort of your first task. Uh, once you have that done, I'd like you to upload that to GitHub. So call that, whatever you want to call it. It's basically your first lesson. I'll make a little um, hand in, what do you call it, uh, assignment in Teams, and then you can submit uh, once you have that done. Basically, again, you got to have your cube function, your ball function, the clicking and the dragging going on. Um, and I want to see like multiple spheres and uh, cubes out there in the scene that you're clicking and dragging. Okay, thanks everybody. Good luck on that, and I hope you have fun. Bye-bye.